Hi, it's Richard Bromwell here from Charterhouse Auctioneers and we're going to have a look through just a few of the lots which are coming up in our 6th of May online classic and vintage motorcycle auction. Now, all the lots I'm going to be talking about today are being dragged out of a barn in deepest, darkest Cornwall and they're all going to be off for sale without reserve. Now, obviously, these are the archetypal barn stored projects that have been collected over a period of many, many years. First up here, this is the uh, 1921 Blackburn. And uh, this is a we, first of a, a, a few flat tankers. Here we go. Again, rare to see a Blackburn here. We come through to the end of the, uh, the images here. And it's uh, that certainly it's uh, not had any fuel in it for a long time, has it? And I, I think we've put some fuel in it. It's going to come straight out again. Next up is the earliest bike in the auction. This is the 1911 Bradbury here, complete with its wicker si um, sidecar combination. There we go. And uh, obviously, as it's barn stored, it's uh, the, the the old bowl weaver's had a bit of a nibble through the uh, the wicker, so that needs some attention. But what a lovely early bike there. And again, following on through here to the uh, 1921 Royal Enfield here. And again, big collection of Royal Enfields. He's got about 17 in total. And uh, next up, his last uh, flat tanker is a 1927 new imperial again pretty much just beautiful barn stored condition most of the flat tankers were bought between about 1978 and 1982 so long-term ownership but he also rode modern bikes as well next up here this is the 1992 the triumph trident 900 estimate on that around about sort of five to eight hundred pounds complete with keys and a bit of patina uh, but as i said earlier on he did have a particular penchant for his royal enfields and we've got three 1966 Royal Enfield Continental GTs, uh, the one with the full fairing held together with a with a bit. Of, I think that's a telephone box exchange or something, isn't it? And obviously, perhaps it predated cable ties, but kept it all together. And then we go on through Royal Enfield, Royal Enfield, Royal Enfield. Bit of patina there, isn't it? Royal Enfield, Royal Enfield, and uh, showing you some of the condition of the Royal Enfields there. And right the way through to a 1980s Royal Enfield uh, bullet there as well. But again, the only uh, uh, sort of other real manufacturer he had was, was this Kawasaki, the KH250, the nice triple there. A lot of interest shown in this one. I think the estimate on that is sort of three to five hundred pounds, and you can see why on that. But again, perhaps one of the more unusual uh, bikes to have in the collection. This is a Douglas Mark series cutaway. Here we go. And uh, it, you, you move it forwards and backwards, and yes, the engine does turn and rotate. Fascinating piece of a sort of motor show type uh, history there. And through on to maybe the last here, the, the AJS. This is the 3780, the 3780, here again showing just a lovely what patina 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 should look like and the estimate on that one is between seven and nine hundred pounds so there's a bit of a quick look through the collection of bikes here this is all from one deceased owner all dragged out of a barn in Cornwall and all being off for sale without reserve